In the last two videos of this series, we created the most simple ray tracer in Blender. And in this video, we are going to add point light sources, ray traced shadows and multiple colored light sources. As we all know, a light source is emitting light rays, we could just call them photons, and these photons then hit the surfaces in our scene. If let's say 100 photons hit a surface, it is a lot brighter than if only 10 photons would hit the same surface. So we could say that brightness is the amount of photons, but let's say we have two surfaces that are of a different size and they both get hit by 100 photons. So obviously the one on the left is a lot brighter because the photons hit a lot closer to each other. So the density matters. So we need to divide the amount of photons by the surface area. Let's say this is one inch and this is two inches. One by one we have one square inch and two by two is four square inches. So here we have 25 photons per square inch and here we have 100. So in our case this would be a good way to measure brightness. And this is what we want to calculate in our ray tracer. Okay, so here I have the file from the last video. Here we generated a ray with a starting point and a direction. Then we intersected our 3D scene with that ray and here we tried to shade this hit point. But I didn't explain how this works, so let's do this again. In the case of this sphere, the normal vector of the surface at this point is pointing towards the light source. Here it is perpendicular and right here no light can hit the surface. We could imagine it as a low resolution sphere that has individual surfaces and they are all pointing in a different direction. Let's say we have a beam of light that is emitting 100 photons and they hit this small surface area here at the bottom, one square inch. What happens if we rotate the surface? Now all the photons would hit this surface here, which is a lot larger. So the same amount of photons get spread over a larger surface area, which means that the density is a lot lower, so the surface is darker. And you could calculate this this way, but a lot simpler way is to just use the dot product Let's say this is our surface with a normal vector and we have a vector that points in the direction of the light source. So it's not the vector that points from the light source but towards the light source. So we invert the vector. Let's call this L. And now we just calculate the dot product between them and it gives us the same exact result as this one here. We use the normal vector and then we created another normalized vector. So now the vector the light vector is pointing straight up, so the light is coming from above. What we now have in Blender is basically a sunlight. All the light rays are parallel to each other. They always come from the same direction. Now let's make a point light source, which can be a lot more interesting. So let's say this is our light position. And now we want to figure out the vector that points to the light source. Let's say our camera is here, our ray origin, and we shoot a ray at this point here. So this is the hit point. And now we want to shade this hit point. So we have our surface normal, the vector here. And now we want to figure out the vector that points to the light source. So this vector and then we normalize it. And then we use the dot product between them and then we have the brightness. So first we need to get to the hit point. So we start at the ray origin. We travel along the ray by the distance. So let's use a vector mass node. We start at the ray origin. We add the direction vector and we scale it by the distance of our scene, the final distance. So we could call this our hit point. Let's add a combine XYZ node. Here we enter the position of our light source. And to get the vector from the hit point to the light source, we subtract the starting point, so the hit point, from the end point, the light source. And then we have this vector. And as we said, we need to normalize it because it's a direction vector. So this is the vector that points to the light source from the hit point. And then we can do the same as we did before. We compare them with the dot product. And now we obviously need to change the position. So let's move the light position up. And if you place the light source almost on the ground, you can see that we have a point light source. Okay, so this part works fine. But one thing you notice is that if we change the height, so we move it really far up, let's try 500 units. It's still the same brightness as before. And this is not what happens in reality. If you have a surface close to the light source, it is a lot brighter than if you move further away. So the distance to the light source also matters. How can we calculate this? 
Okay, so let's say we have a light source here and a plane in front of it. Let's say it is one unit away from the plane. And so let's also make the dimensions of the plane also one unit. And this light source is emitting light in all directions. But we only care about the light rays that hit the surface. So all the photons that hit here. So let's say 100 photons hit this surface. So the brightness would be 100 divided by 1. 1 by 1 is the surface area. Okay, let's say we have a plane behind it that is 2 units away and is 2 units in size. If you would remove this surface in the front, all the photons would hit the larger surface. So also 100. But now they are spread over a larger surface area. 2 by 2 is 4, so we only have a quarter of the brightness. So the distance was here 2 units. Let's call this the light distance. So the brightness of a surface in this case is, let's say the photons, divided by the light distance squared. Squared because we have a surface area, so we need to multiply 2 by 2 to get the square units. And this is called the inverse square law. So back in Blender we need to get the distance from the light source to the hit point. And that's the same as if we just use the length of the vector here, before it was normalized. So we have our light distance, now we square it by multiplying it by itself. And then we need to divide the remaining brightness by the squared distance. So let's divide it. And now because our light source is so far away, we don't see anything, so let's move it closer. And as you can see, we have exactly what we wanted. So now if the light source is moving further away, it is also becoming less bright. Uh, one last thing that we need to do is, because the dot product also returns negative numbers, so everything that is black is actually negative, we have to remove the negative part by using a maximum node and zero. We don't see any changes, but this is important for later. So next, uh, I would like to group this all. So we have one function that returns the hit point and its distance and the normal vector at the hit point. So what this node does is we give it a ray and it will output whatever this ray hits. So we basically shoot a ray with this node. And we can shoot this ray from any position, in any direction, and it will always output the correct values. And this is what we need for creating shadows. We need to shoot so-called shadow rays. And what is a shadow? It's just a lack of light, because the light is obstructed by another object. So here we have our floor plane and our sphere, and here we have our light source. So the light is hitting all the surfaces, but in our case now we also have light here at the back. And this can't happen because the sphere is blocking it. So how can we calculate a shadow? So let's say we have our camera here. First we shoot a ray into the scene here. And then we shade this hit point so it gets the full light from this light source. What we now need to do is, from this hit point, we need to shoot a ray to the light source and check if it hit something else. So in this case the, the shadow ray was blocked by this object. So we have a shadow here. So no light can reach this point. So we need to compare the distance, how far the shadow ray traveled, to the distance of the light source. Our light distance. If it is smaller, then we have a shadow. Okay, so we said we need to shoot a ray, so we copy this node. We shoot a ray from the hit point. So our hit point becomes the new starting point, the new ray origin. And in which direction we want to shoot a ray? in the direction of the light. We already have this, so that we need the normalized vector. So we shoot a ray from the hit point to the light source. And then we get back the distance and whatever we hit. And now we need to compare this distance of the shadow ray. And we can use a greater than. If the shadow ray distance is greater than the distance to the light, so this was this value here, the light distance, before we squared it, then this function returns 1, and if it's smaller, then it will return 0. So this is basically a mask. Let's display this. This gives us the shadows in some sense. So we need to multiply our lighting data from before here by this mask, so all the black parts will get black. Okay, now we have shadows, but we have these weird spots going on, these weird trippy circles. This is called shadow acne. So why does this happen? Well, if this is our sphere, and let's say we shoot a ray from our camera, and we get this hit point. Because we cannot calculate with infinite precision, the hit point is sometimes a little bit inside the sphere. 
and sometimes outside. When it's outside, we can easily shoot a ray, it is not blocked. But if it's inside and we shoot a ray to the light source, it is blocked by the sphere itself. So the way we could fix this is by just moving the point always outside a bit by the surface normal. But in our case, it's simpler to just ignore the sphere intersection. So if the ray origin is inside the sphere, somewhere inside the sphere, we just ignore the sphere at all. So we have to get back into our sphere node. And here we had our mask that tells us if we hit the sphere or not. Now we have to adapt this mask with a new mask. So let's calculate the distance between the ray origin and the sphere center, the position of the sphere. Set it to distance. And now we need to test if the distance is greater than the radius. So this will always return zero if the ray origin is inside the sphere. So we can just multiply our previous mask with this mask. So if this one is zero, it will cancel out this one. And here we go. Now we can change the sphere position and we have perfect shadows. Now let's put this all into one function. So we have our hit point as an input, the position of the light source and the normal vector. So let's call this our point light node. And now let's add multiple light sources. We copy this. And to combine these two light sources, it's very simple. We just add the values together. And as you can see, we have two light sources that we can control separately. So what if we want to control the intensity of a light source? What we could do is we just multiply the output. So we can do this inside the point light function. Let's make a new math node, set it to multiply. And let's create a new input. We can call this the intensity. And at the end, we just scale the light data with our intensity input. Okay, what if we want to change the color of our light sources? Now we only calculate one channel, the brightness. So instead of one value, we need to output three values, a vector, because color has three components, red, green, and blue. So we use a vector mass node, and we can scale or multiply our color by the brightness. So we need to make a color input, set it to color, and the default value should be white, perfectly white. So now the input is here, and we just plug it in here. And now at the output of this node, we also have to change this to a vector instead of one value. And let's call this our shading data. And because these are vectors, we have to add them with a vector math node. Okay, and now we can change the color from orange. If we want to add a lot more light sources, we would have to always use the add node. So we could just pass the shading values through like we did in our 3D scene with the sphere nodes. So we do the addition inside the node. So let's add a new input. At the top, a vector, let's call this shading. And then we take this shading and we add our new value to it. So let's create an empty vector with a combined XYZ node. We can rename this to shading. And now we can pass this through. And now you can add as many point light sources as you wanted. So Okay, so here we generate our ray, here we intersect it, and here we shade the hit point based on its normal with our light sources. 